All right, everybody, in this video, we're talking about the CB750, and specifically, we're talking about the cost involved to get the bike from a, you know, barn relic to a road-going, you know, semi-custom bike that I enjoy almost daily. So this is gonna be a very informative episode. This is gonna be all about just numbers. So let's go through the list. I'll tell you exactly what I had to do to the bike. We'll break it down into a few different categories and give you guys an idea of what exactly it takes to bring a bike back to life. Now this video is a follow-up to a previous video that I did when I first picked up the bike. And what I did in that one is uh, kind of walk through what I anticipated the costs were going to be. And uh, that was intended to help you guys budget maybe your projects, give you guys an idea of what to expect and also not to expect. So that, that video is very informative. I really recommend you guys go watch that, maybe even before starting this one, because uh, it's going to be pretty cool to see how they compare and contrast. Now, as of right now, the CB750 is a uh, ready-to-go, road-going bike. It's a lot of fun. It looks exactly how I want it to look, and it performs just fine for what I need out of a vintage bike. It's, uh, it's been a very fun project. I've really enjoyed it, and uh, there really were no major surprises along the way. There were some, uh, some things that uh, took a little bit extra work, and there were some things that took uh, maybe no work at all. And to show you guys exactly what it took, I have my, uh, my spreadsheets here that have all of the costs involved down to the cent with the motorcycle. So let's go through this list. I will break it down by category and I'll show you guys exactly what it took. All right, let's dive in with this thing. Now, every bike that I do, I keep a spreadsheet with all of my corresponding costs with everything. So this one, I'm actually allowed to share this information with you guys because it is my motorcycle. Now, the one behind me, like the CX500 and a lot of the other ones on the channel, those are actually customer bikes. So I'm not really at liberty um, to kind of divulge how much we have into them because that's like some personal information for the, uh, the actual customer. And, you know, I, I have to respect that. So this one, though, I really wanted to, to share the costs involved. So I actually had to rewatch my original video and uh, figure out exactly kind of what I had thought on that one. But with the beginning of any project, there are going to be some unknowns. Now, I've had a lot of projects in the past where I've underbid on accident and a lot of things have popped up and it just ended up costing way more. I am just like you guys. And um, one thing I, I say is, you, you know, you, you create your budget, you get an idea of how much it's going to take, then you double it and then you add 50%. And that's really what it's going to take. But we weren't far off on this one. I'm pretty well versed in Hondas and I had an idea of what this was going to cost. So to summarize, originally I had uh, anticipated an all-in cost of about 1700 bucks for the bike to get it, you know, basically just road, road legal. Turns out I wasn't far off on that one, but the way that money kind of uh, was distributed did change quite a bit. So in case you guys didn't know, when I had originally bought this bike about two years ago at this point, there was no title with it, so it was uh, it was local. I got it for cheap. It had no title. Engine was locked up. I paid a hundred dollars for the bike. Now I know that's really cheap, but here in the Midwest, that's you know that's I don't want to say going rate. I know it's a good deal, but yet you know it's not really out of the norm for me to get bikes kind of at that level. So that was uh, that was our starting point. Was a hundred dollars. Now that brings us to the first major hurdle with the bike and that is getting a title for it, giving some uh, proof of ownership basically. So I had originally estimated 400 bucks to be associated with obtaining a title of some sorts, whether that be like Vermont registration. I actually have a video on that here if you guys haven't seen that one. It's another informative video. Or a bonded title, abandoned title, declaratory ownership. I've done numerous, numerous title uh, methods here. But again, I put about 400 bucks. Now, as I got going with the project, the previous owner actually found the title and you know, I'd been staying in touch with him. And luckily enough, that saved me a, a huge amount of time and potentially a lot of costs because I was able to just go ahead and swap the title into my name and we skipped ahead quite a, quite a bit. Now, in the meantime, we had also unseized the engine, so it didn't really take uh, any real money to do that, but I did end up spending a little bit more on, say, gaskets and seals and just to kind of like, you know, rebuild the oil pump, so O-rings and stuff like that. 
those are some costs I didn't have uh, associated originally. One thing that I really want to stress is my miscellaneous category, and that is for unforeseen costs. So that is always very important. That miscellaneous category I put as 400 bucks. That turned out to, to get me right to where my estimate was, uh, where the bike ended up being. So now let me take you through exactly what it did cost. I'll show where the money was broken up. I have about five categories here that will kind of um, give you guys a better idea of the stages that the bike took. Now I just mentioned those categories and they're broken down by color here, not that you guys can see this, but my first main category was just simply to make the bike run. That is not riding or anything like that, just running. The second category I have was to make it ride. And this one I have as making it ride legally. So this includes title application and insurance and, th and things like that, making it a road legal bike. Beyond that, I have another category that uh, is the looks department. So if you guys remember, I, I did like side covers and side cover emblems and more beautification things like things that that weren't necessary for the bike to run or go down the road but just things to make it make it look better make it more aesthetically pleasing make it look a little bit more complete and then finally my uh, my miscellaneous category and that is going to be for like you know my exhaust i had a uh, an actual cb 750a parts bike that i picked up for a hundred bucks i have all of my shipping fees combined into one some total and that's in that miscellaneous category and then i also had like sprockets and and, a, and of course just a couple other things that weren't absolutely necessary to get the bike on the road but just things that i had chose to add as i went and then finally i have my my total amount so let's break it down to run my total amount was 242 dollars and 86 cents so the list for that Marvel Mystery Oil, because we had to unseize the engine, so that was the very first thing I bought for the bike. I went ahead and I did uh, end up rebuilding the oil pump, so I have numerous uh, O-rings on here and stuff like that, so oil pump O-rings, my stator cover gasket, my transmission cover gasket, oil pan gasket. I did end up doing um, some float bowl gaskets, carburetor drain screw O-rings, of course, oil filter, air filter, and I did purchase a oil seal kit. I could tell there were going to be a few things that were that were leaking. So um, I did purchase a full engine oil seal kit. Gunk foam cleaner. I probably should have put that in the miscellaneous category, but really like to clean the bike before I started that, that's necessary to me. Four spark plugs. I did end up putting four spark plug caps on the bike. So I had made a video on an orange CB750 where I tested the coils and such. Kind of went through the ignition system and showed you guys how to do that this bike actually uses the original coils and the uh, spark plug caps did not ohm out correctly so they were out of range so simple thing replace four caps we're rocking the original coils the original points the original condenser and that's pretty cool if you ask me so i know i could upgrade to like an electronic ignition but i just want to see how far i can go so that's kind of that explains that I did end up purchasing two more keys for the bike because it had an ignition switch on it that I rewired, but I went ahead and got the correct keys for that ignition barrel. There was uh, some vacuum tubing for the carburetors, like the crossovers between the carbs, and then of course the overflows, fuel hose, oil, and then a battery. And that's really it for just making it run. So again, $242.86. Now, the next one is, again, making it legal, making it go down the road. So to make it safe to ride and legal to ride. This one, we have a few more things. So first up, set of handlebars. The bars that came on the bike, those kind of rabbit ears, man, that really upset a lot of you guys. But uh, those were just on there when I got the bike. I ended up picking up uh, a set of handlebars for like 25 bucks off Dime City. They're really nice and they fit me great. I did end up putting a front master cylinder rebuild kit in it. Some uh, new fork seals, of course, brake caliper rebuild kit, tires and tubes. And then down here I have like, you know, your Petcock rebuild kit. I did end up putting all new cables on the bike. So throttle cables, clutch cable, a new headlight rim retainer and a new uh, actual headlight bulb itself. And I went with kind of the more expensive version on this to retain the original looks. And then I did replace the, uh, the actual brake hoses. So the bike 
did have the brake hoses originally, but they were getting cracked and stuff, so just went ahead and replaced them. And a lot of the stuff I sourced from 4 onecom so they had some uh, really attractively priced kits for all of this. So of course, continuing on, we have fork oil on here, an airbox seal, so the ring around the airbox to seal the two halves together. I had to get creative with that one. Oil and hose for the uh, oil tank, so that was like my breather lines, overflow lines, that kind of thing. The cam chain tensioner gasket, so the, the actual tensioner was a little seized in there, and I went ahead and just took it off, that way I could inspect it, and uh, you know, just replace the gasket on that, so not a big deal. I did end up having to put a new flasher relay on the bike. And then this one, I did add a chain. I, I added a chain later on, but I feel to make this thing ride, you know, this would have been something that was required originally. So I had a chain in stock from my parts hoard, but I do have $50 on here as a, what it should cost or what it would cost. Now I added the bike to insurance and then of course just registration for it. So nothing too crazy there. Again, that total was uh, $512.73. So not too bad to make it legal, make it ride. Moving on to the looks department, this is uh, kind of where it started deviating a little bit from my original estimates because uh, originally I had said that I was probably gonna put like a $100 seat cover on it and uh, maybe a couple other little things, but I ended up doing a little bit bartering. I ended up trading the exhaust that came on the bike for a replacement seat that matched perfectly and I was super happy about it because I had a four in one that came with that parts bike that I wanted to use anyway. But what that meant is we didn't have to spend that hundred bucks on a seat cover. So basically everything for here is gonna be in regards to the side covers that took up the, the biggest chunk of uh, anything in the looks department if you ask me. So trim black paint and scuff pads. We have uh, a used front fender and side covers. So I picked up a dented front fender that, that matched the aesthetic of the bike, as I said. And then I went ahead and got a, uh, a custom color matched paint in a spray can form from a paint shop here. And it's not perfect, but it definitely worked for the bike. You know, you could always do better. You could, you know, do multi-stage and all that stuff, but it works for how the bike needs to look. And I'm very satisfied with it. So I picked up some used side cover, like the orange diamonds that go on there. And then I backdated it and picked up some uh, some like K0, K1 side cover lettering. So the CB750 instead of like the larger bulky, bulky version, I went with a slimmer kind of script uh, version, which I really like. Mixing cup, primer, brush. And then I uh, picked up a another used side cover to repair and then side cover rubber set, and that came from four to one, so just to make sure you can take them on and off without breaking them again. So all in for the looks department, $298.58. So not too bad there. $56 of that is just in two cans of paint being a 2K clear and then a color match paint. So, you know, not, not too bad, all things considered. And then everything else is basically sourced uh, used trying to find the kind of perfectly patinaed parts for the bike. Now the miscellaneous category, this one was important. I included my $100 CB750 parts bike in there. And of course I got the header from that, the rear rack that I didn't really show in the time lapse. That actually came from that bike. I modified it. I did swap the rear shocks onto it. And then after that, I did pick up a stainless muffler to pair with that header. So you guys saw that a, uh, an exhaust clamp, and then I did, uh, I did end up buying a fuel tank bag to kind of just put some min miscellaneous stuff in there. And then with this one, I did include sprockets and then that oil pressure gauge that I added. All of this stuff, not necessary, but just stuff I wanted to add. So within that category, we're looking at $480.26. If you want to compare that to the original miscellaneous category where I estimated 400 bucks, we're not far off. So that's pretty good. Now there were a few items in here that don't necessarily fit into any particular category. So the original purchase of the bike for hundred bucks. I have oil in here. Of course we've done multiple oil changes. I have some fuel and then I do have an oil pressure switch. I felt this wasn't necessary to make the bike run or ride. So I don't know, I'm just keeping it outside of everything else. But uh, lastly, I have a swing arm bushing set that I have yet to install. So that's gonna be probably one of the first things I do 
kind of getting into this next season as it gets a little bit warmer is I do want to put a new replace the swing arm bushings. It's needed it since day one. I've just been just been busy. So I don't have a total for that category, but all in for this bike, start to finish, or at least start to where it's at now, I have $1,732.90 invested in this thing. So I'm doing really good. And uh, that kind of met up with the original estimate because I didn't have that original $400 for like trying to get a title for this thing. So I saved money there and I got to spend a little bit more on making it nice. Originally, I thought I was going to spend like 120 bucks on a regulator rectifier. I haven't touched that. So, you know, I still have the ability to upgrade that in the future. It might still be something I do. I don't know. Not really in a hurry. The thing works fine as it is. Same thing with, uh, you know, like the looks department. And we saved that 100 bucks on the seat cover. And of course, you know, we, we did some bartering. And then that miscellaneous category originally, that just kind of brought everything kind of back together where it needed to be. And what, I'm off by $32, $32, so not bad. Now, obviously that number does not include any of my labor, so I would estimate I'd have at least a couple hundred hours in this thing of just scrubbing parts and rebuilding stuff, searching around on the internet, running errands, fuel associated with the van, just getting stuff where it needs to go. So yeah, I'd probably be into it for, I mean, at least, at least a few grand, which is still really good considering what the bike is. Now, I had done a, uh, a GS550 in the past that uh, if you had three grand in it, you wouldn't be doing too well. That's, they're just not as valuable. So if you're, if you're trying to do this to you know, come out ahead on stuff and be able to make a profit when you sell things, you know, if you had a few grand in that GS550, you probably wouldn't break even. You'd probably actually lose money on that. So the one that I had in the past, I think I was in it for about 2,500 bucks. And that was okay. I sold it to a friend, 2,500, just kind of like, you know, wash my hands with it and, and let them enjoy it. And I got some enjoyment out of the bike, got to make some videos and that was cool. This one, a lot of people have reached out trying to buy the thing. Everybody wants me to source CB750s for them. It's not for sale guys. It's, it's not going to be for sale. The, uh, the, I don't want to, I don't want to sell at prices like $10,000. So I want to enjoy this thing in that kind of that brings me to another topic of originality and stuff like that. There's a lot of people who want to say, oh, it would be better with like the stock four and a four exhaust, or it'd be better stock, or it'd be more, you should restore it, it'd be worth more. Yeah, I don't really, I don't covet it in that way. A motorcycle for me is all about experience and enjoyment. So if you put a, if you put whatever, 10 grand on the ground here, and then you had this cool CB750 next to it that, uh, that I could actually go ride, which one am I going to take? I'm going to take that CB750, keep that thing, and go enjoy it because it, I know, money is nice, yes, but it's not everything. So, and I grew up with a different generation who, you know, I didn't, I didn't have the CB750 on my wall, or I didn't see it in, in news ads or whatever when it was new. I don't covet it in stock form. I actually got interested in motorcycles or custom motorcycles because of custom CB750s. So, our opinions are going to differ on that, and. I definitely understand what you guys are saying, oh, it'd be worth more and stuff like that, but worth more to who? It's not worth more to me. You're saying it'd be worth more to a stranger that I don't know who might, uh, who might covet it for a different reason than me, but what's the point of even having it if I'm just worried about how much I think it's worth to somebody else? I, I'm just going to ride it and enjoy it. That's where I get my money out of. So this one, I want to make my own. That's why it has a four and a one. That's why the rims are painted black. That's why it has a couple little changes on it that are just kind of for me because I get my enjoyment out of riding them. So I'm very happy with how I have the bike right now and I will continue to ride it and make it my own. And I actually have a, uh, a 1978 CB750 that is going to be a full build at some point. Um, I have good plans for that thing, but uh, it's it's kind of down the down the, the to-do list a little bit, but we'll get to it. But uh, hopefully this video answers you guys' questions about how much this bike cost, because I know I've got a lot of comments, you know, throughout throughout the process with this bike, wanting to know this information, and I really wanted to make a follow-up video to my original one before I got started. So it's cool to see how they're similar and how they're different. If you guys are unfamiliar with the bike or if you've just seen the time lapse, I can't recommend the playlist enough. I had a lot of fun making it. 
and I go into a deep dive as far as all of the mechanicals with it, the electrical, all of that stuff that you didn't see in the time lapse. There's only 10% of, of, of what was done shown in the time lapse. So definitely go back through. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them below. I will get right back to you. And uh, check some other videos out on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more videos. I don't know what we're going to be posting next, but it's going to be something motorcycle related. I can promise you that. So anyway, hope you guys like this one. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.